The Gold Coast Suns could be a powerhouse in the AFL. They have one fatal flaw, which has frustrated them all season long. After their away loss to North Melbourne, coach Damien Hardwick let his frustration out. I'm angry, to be fair. And as a footy club, we've got to grow the f up, to be perfectly honest. Excuse the language, but you know we've, we've been in this situation too many times, so it's up to me and the match committee to sit there and... At the time of making this, the Suns are nine wins and zero losses at home, but zero wins and nine losses in away matches. It's a bizarre record. If the Suns had won just three of those away games, they would be sitting third and entrenched in the top eight. Overall, it shows how difficult it is to win away games, especially as an interstate side, and the mental aspect of the record, which is surely having an effect when the Suns leave People's First Stadium. Winning away in the home and away season is the next step for this side, let alone winning finals on the road. Becomes even more difficult with a packed out stadium full of opposition supporters with the stakes at the highest level. Within the past five years, some of the great finals have been won by huge road underdogs. The 2021 semi-final between the Brisbane Lions and Western Bulldogs was a classic. Brisbane finished 2021 fourth, pipping the dogs for the position by half a percent. They won their last three games of the regular season, but did lose the qualifying final to Melbourne by 33 points. Still, they had a home semi-final at the Gabba, a place where they had won nine of their 11 games that season. Their form was still solid. But their opposition in the Bulldogs had lost their last three of 2021 and had to play Essendon in Tasmania, where clearly there were more Bomber fans than Bulldog fans. There was a tussle up until half time, but an eight goal to zero second half got the Dogs a win and trip to Brisbane. It was a game full of momentum, but not like you think. The lead never got higher than three goals either way, and every time one side would kick two or three goals in a row, the other would quickly answer back. It was the definition of a back and forth. That three goal break did come deep in the third quarter, when Ryan Lester kicked a snapping goal. But almost instantly, the Bulldogs substitute and Jason Johannesson answered back. Heading into the final term, the Lions held a 10 point lead. The clearance game of the Bulldogs began to have an impact however. They won the stat by 10 on the night and it led to the first goal of the last quarter. And then enter Bailey Smith, who announced himself as a football star on the night. His first involvement was a direct goal assist to Josh Shackey to put the Bulldogs ahead. And then 40 or so seconds later, his wobbly drop punt sailed through. With nine minutes left after Tom Fullard and Gold, it was a battle. It was hard to create space and exhaustion was clear. It was the moment people remember from the match, but the Lions actually answered immediately. Zach Bailey kicked a great goal himself to tie the match back up, and again the two teams headed to the centre square. A ruck infringement free kick handed Tim English the ball, and his kick inside 50 got over the back, and Latham Vandermeer intelligently hack kicked the point. Seconds later, Taylor Jurey won a pivotal one on one with Charlie Cameron, and when Dane Zorko sprayed a final prayer out in the full, it gave the Bulldogs one of their greatest wins in club history. Before the 2023 preliminary final thriller between Collingwood and GWS at the MCG, the same matchup occurred in 2019. The result on that day was different, and the game itself might have been better than the one played four years later. The game itself was wild and full of controversy when it mattered most. The rain was pouring down steady for most of the game, and the score at the half was just 20 to 17. It was unclear what team would be the one to break the game open. Even though Stephen Canelio, Callan Ward, Toby Green and Lockie Whitfield were out, it was the midfield of the Giants that got them going. 
Defender turned star on baller Zach Williams had his best AFL game, winning 10 clearances, and his great goal early in the third began the separation. His running mate in Tim Taranto kicked the next, and in one quarter, the Giants had the lead by 26, a big margin in the wet conditions. With a scoreline of 30 to 56 with just 14 minutes left, a comeback was still a long shot. And when Josh Thomas's rush kick went through, everyone could feel the game was back on. As the ball was about to be bounced in the centre square, video showed the goal should have been denied. From this point on, it felt like the extra week Collingwood got off, paired with the Giants having to play their semi-final against the Lions in Brisbane, all met at once. GWS looked physically exhausted, while Collingwood sent wave after wave, peppering the goals. Chris Main kicked a goal, then Josh Thomas kicked another, and with seven minutes left, the game looked over. When Main had another shot to tie up the match, the score review correctly did its job. The ball was clearly short and caught a behind. Taylor Adams missed another chance to put them ahead, and time was running out. After Melbourne was upset by Sydney in the 2022 qualifying final and Brisbane held off Richmond at home in their elimination final, it set up an intriguing semi-final the following week. Not just because of the two teams playing in it, but because of the venue, a place where the Lions had struggled. Melbourne won their previous two games before the qualifying final loss, while Brisbane did get some luck in their elimination final when Tom Lynch had his goal overturned to become a point, setting up Joe Danaher for the game-winning goal. Coming into the MCG final, Brisbane were huge underdogs, mainly because of their record at the venue. The club had lost 11 straight at the G and had not won there since 2014. With 20 seconds left in the first half, it looked like a 12th straight loss when Cozzy Pickett dribbled home another Melbourne goal. A quick response by Calamachi kept the Lions within four goals at the half, but they were being outplayed. In an effort to change things up, Jared Berry was sent to Clayton Oliver after the break. It proved to be one of the best coaching moves of Chris Fagan's career. Oliver was much more quiet in the third and fourth quarter, while Berry had his own influence. It helped swing momentum and get the ball in Brisbane's forward half. Led by Eric Hipwood, who also had a career game, booted three important goals in the third quarter, and the score sat at 59 apiece, heading into the final term. Melbourne just kept holding on, but Brisbane broke away when Hipwood again used his pace to get out the back and feed Charlie Cameron. Zach Bailey's goal, not long after, was the final blow to Melbourne, who gave one last push with three minutes left, but fell short. Out of pure frustration, Jake Lever gave away a holding the ball free kick and 50 metre penalty. The Lions broke an 11 year drought in the process while making another preliminary final. <laughs> 